Hey everybody, uh, I'm coming back at you. It's a little late in the evening. This is the second part uh, of my addressing the black woman who was hit in the face with a brick because she refused to give her number out. I've seen a lot of posts. Uh, I've been able to gain a lot more insight into who this woman is. And so there's a lot of people especially men who are justifying uh, what happened or at least saying that ain't their problem. And I hear you uh, because of who she is. Number one, she's a Somalian immigrant. Uh, number two, she has a reputation of doing stupid stuff on videos. Well, here's what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to tell you where I stand on that. Number one is I purposely did that video. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm normally behind the trend on any type of trending viral topic because I'm doing my research. I don't like to have to backtrack. I don't like to have to post retractions because I jumped out in front of something because it was hot. Uh, but I purposely did a video on this without doing any research on her. And you can almost see the video where she's talking about it. When you can see where she just got hit with the brick before she went to the hospital, you can see it. I'm looking, I'm going like, she looks familiar, but then I'm, I'm in Houston. She's in Houston. So it's uh, a big ass city, a whole bunch of people. Uh, but you, you, you tend to see certain people. Uh, and I don't know where I saw it. It may have been on a video. It may have been at an event or something, but I don't know. But she looked familiar, but I just looked and I said, Hey, I'm not going to do any research on it. I am going to speak totally on principle and then I'll find out what's going on and then I'll follow up. Well, I found out and I can tell you from what I found out about this young lady, I don't like her. I don't like her from a personal perspective, but I stand 100% on what I said at first. Now, I am an African-American, a black man that's in America. Call me, Call it what you want to. I'm a descendant of, a sl of slaves. So I have a very unique experience that's different from the rest of the diaspora, rest of uh, the diaspora, wherever we are on this planet. Uh, and I acknowledge that. And that's the, 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 the primal element and force of what I'm dealing with is what my people here in this country have dealt with. I'm definitely on that. Um, and I understand that. But here's the thing. I'm not divorcing myself from uh, melanated people based on borders, based on historical experiences, while I take care of home first. What you've got to be very careful at is we've got to become a lot more sophisticated in our understanding of how things work in this country. The simplicity of it is I'm, I'm FBS or I am foundational, you know, I'm a foundation, foundational black uh, or I am whatever we want to classify ourselves as. I'm a descendant of slaves, whatever. Okay. Yeah, we are. And that's a unique experience. And we often catch a whole lot of flack from black immigrants. And I'm aware of that. But what you've got to understand is the same way that we are being shown the very worst of them, they are being shown the very worst of us. I've had black immigrants as clients, I have black immigrants as friends, and I'm telling you, it's just like having anybody else. I have foundational black Americans who have trashed me. I have foundational black Americans, some of which you know, who have done me dirty. I have foundational black Americans who done, and I've had black immigrants. So the thing is, people, in, in, I've had white people who have treated me better than some foundational black people. But my thing is, my blackness stands firm. It does not move me against what I believe is right across any board, but my blackness stands firm. Let me tell you what happens when you start allowing them to create these caverns within the diaspora to where we have this hatred based on borders, based on historical experiences. What happens then is you lose the power of your force and your numbers. You truly become a minority. The truth is they don't want you to understand you're not a minority. You're a minority based on borders and nationality, but based on the very core principle. Here's the thing. Nobody's looking at black people when 
when you get shot, when Amadou, when Amadou Diallo got shot, they weren't saying he was, uh, I forget where he was from. Was he, was he Somali? Well, whatever. When they said, when, when, when they shot him, he, they were shooting a black man. They weren't shooting a Somali. When Oscar Grant got shot at Fruitville, that, that, that wasn't based on the fact that he was from Oakland. He was black. So let me explain something to you at the core. When we look, when they look at us before they know it in that nationality, before they know what hood we're from, before they know what faith we claim, they know we're black. And so you got to understand that across this cont across this uh, planet, that we are judged based on that. We're seen based on that. And our strength is in understanding that. It doesn't mean that we don't call the bull crap that's being done. But what you gotta understand is their viewpoint of us and their behavior towards us is because they're being fed the propaganda that gives us a bad image, a bad look. And we're getting the same dose of that. Plus we're getting how we're treated based off of what's going on. The game is being played. Am I, co am I co signing it or justifying it? Hell no. It's wrong, and we need to call it out, and we need to stand firm, and we need to take care of home first. But let me explain something to you. Let me tell you what happens when you're able to let them put you in a situation where it's okay for some blacks to be done dirty because they're not foundational blacks. The hell with them. I don't got nothing to do with them. They're, they're immigrants. Here's the problem that creates a mindset where you start distinguishing and separating. And you, you're not seeing it. And so eventually, if it ain't my family, I don't care. And tell me how many blacks act like that right now, because we've been able to move into such a point of tribalism that if it ain't the family, we don't see it. So that's a disconnect even among FBS. So it's and so what you get is the, the and here's the other thing as a man. The moment that I can sit up and come up with any reason that a man, a black man, or any man, but definitely a black man can hit a black woman in the face with a brick. And she's not physically in any situation or position to harm him. Then we still have a problem because my manhood isn't dependent upon what a woman does. My manhood is dependent upon me. My manhood is secure enough in itself that a woman telling me she doesn't want me to have her number is not going to trigger me into harming her. A woman can say anything she wants to to me. She's not going to make me harm her because that doesn't hurt me. I know who I am. This goes back to what I was saying in the first video. We haven't socialized black men. Now, from what I understand, this was somebody from Africa. It was an African on African crime. Uh, and so, and people say, well, then that doesn't, it absolutely does matter. Let me explain to you again, we need to develop a high level of sophistication and understanding how things work. See, we have kids and our kids have these things called these smartphones and these devices. And guess what? When they see this, this stuff is trending all up and down Instagram, all up and down Twitter. And I, I guarantee you, our kids are seeing it. And do you think they're old enough at seven, at eight? And they got the phones and they're on Twitter and they're on Instagram and they're on TikTok. And this stuff is all up and down all of those feeds. Do you actually think they have the sophistication to understand it? Because a lot of y'all ain't getting it to understand that, OK, that that person got hit with a brick by because they're Somalian and they're an immigrant. It's not a big problem. We don't worry about them black women. You, they can get hit. And let's not forget that coming from Somalia, that was some ethnic cleansing not that long ago going on in Somalia. They're literally cutting babies out of women, cutting their breasts off, killing them. That's a lot of hostility to come from. And that's still trauma. And guess who's pushing the ethnic cleansing? Yeah, that's black on black crime. But guess who's pushing it? Guess who's behind it? They don't look like us. So when I see all of this behavior, I know where it's been. Everybody's playing Africa. Everybody outside of Africa that looks like us are in some way being moved and played. And everybody's angry at everybody except who they should be angry at. 
It's amazing to me. I'm going to say it again, and I'm not moving off of it. Personally, what I know about this woman, I'm not feeling at all. I don't like how she carries herself. I don't like some of the stuff. But I'm going to tell you something else before I get started. A lot of y'all act like y'all more mad because she walk around slapping these non-black cats. Let's call it like that because I ain't trying to get my channel snatched. These non-black cats that she sl just slapped, which I think is the stupidest BS in the world. What's a, what amazes me is that she ain't called a case for the bull crap. But y'all act like y'all more mad about that because everybody's talking about she walking around. Well, first and foremost, they, 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 they got enough power and clout and all the other stuff going on. They can handle themselves. My thing is, is she walking around slapping black dudes? Did she slap the dude that hit her? Even if she slapped the dude, hitting her with a brick, ladies, keep your hands to yourself. But hitting her with a brick, now from what I understand, he asked for the number, she told him no. He picks up a brick and throws it, hits her in the face. Now the thing is, no kid, six, seven, eight years old, is going to be distinguishing FBS, Somali immigrant, and all this other stuff that we're using to make it to make that okay or to make it not an issue. It's an issue because it happened in this country. It's an issue because it's gonna go up and down all these feeds and it's gonna be on purpose that it's gonna get all this play and it's gonna be a young, bunch of young cats that's gonna take that and sit up and say, that's what I can do. And it's gonna be a bunch of young females and sit up and say, I'm not valuable enough to be protected. And we talking FBS and all this. Oh, I understand, I get it. I definitely understand. There's a very unique experience. There's a very unique war and a battle that needs to be waged to gain what is owed to us as descendants of slaves. I'm not I'm not arguing that. I'm 100% about it. But what I'm going to tell you is be very careful about where you're getting the ideas. As a person who deals with mentalism, as a person that deals with psychological dynamics, let me tell you something. It is one of the most powerful things is to come up with an idea and convince people they came up with it. Be very careful that the ideologies you're holding aren't ideologies someone gave you because it benefits them. Ask yourself who benefits from the tribalism based on nationalism that splits up the diaspora. I guarantee you it ain't the diaspora. So then you got to understand how was it pushed? How, how did we get it? And what does it mean to us? And what does it mean in the future? My whole thing is that that... She has constantly put herself in a position that eventually something like this was going to happen. You would think that it would have, it would have been a Caucasian male who would have did it, but it wasn't. But that doesn't say we don't address that because what we're trying to do is build men who protect. And we don't get, here's, here's what you've got to understand. The moment that we start allowing men to arbitrarily determine who they're going to protect and who they're not going to protect, who is uh, not, who is worthy uh, of being hit and who is not, then we lose ourselves because then I can still do what my emotions tell me to do. But when we sit up and say black men don't harm black women, that's real simple. Black men don't harm black women. Even when black women act in a pure ass, Black men don't harm black women. Now, I might not mess with you. I might not deal with you. I might not want you around me. I, don't, I might not have one word to say to you, but I'm not going to harm you. And there's something in that that triggers something in us. As long as our spirit as men can be okay with a woman getting her jaw broken because she didn't want to give up her number because she's from another location or because she's got a flappy mouth and because she does stupid stuff. I mean, how many FBS black women doing crazy stuff on social media? I don't want now one of them hurt either. I don't agree with what they doing. I listen to the, some of the stuff they're saying. I get headaches. But I, 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 you can't hurt them. You don't put your hands on them. We've got to have a standard and the standard has to be based on who we are as men, not who they are as women. Our leadership is going to dictate who our women become. We can talk all day about what they do and how they do it, but our leadership is providing the environment 
that's going to determine their behavior. So, and I mean, they going in, I'm just getting all this stuff. They literally going in right now on Instagram. And that's what I'm trying to tell you on. And so what you get is without even realizing it, there's a level of emotional hatred there because you don't go that hard in the paint to fight to say that that was okay. Unless it's something inside that's triggered. We can't have that in us and win. Because that's way too much vitriol aimed at people who look like us. Not enough of it aimed at the people who are actually harming us. Think about what she actually has done and harmed in, as far as the, the, the damage she's been able to do to blacks compared to what's being done to us. And then look at the level of hatred aimed at her versus the ones aimed. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like I said, I'm still tripping. People are hot. I mean, you know, she weren't around slapping it ain't us. You know, let them deal with her. You know, they're going to deal with her the right way. They're going to give her a case and they're going to put her away. And if they do, she asked for it. She brought it on herself. But sitting up and saying as a black man, I'm going to co-sign some dude hitting her in the face with a brick because she didn't get her number. She didn't give up her number. Or even sit up and say, it's not my problem. We got enough of that going on. It's my problem because it happens in the U.S. It's my problem because y young kids I'm trying to help and save are going to see that and they're going to interpret it totally different than a 28-year-old dude or a 28-year-old woman or a 38-year-old dude or 38. They're going to see it differently and they're going to see it through the immaturity of their observations and they are going to think it's okay. And they're not going to give a damn about where she's from. Because that doesn't matter to them. She's a black girl. She got hit by a black dude. And that's all that's going to matter. You've got to think beyond what where you're at. You're not just responsible for how you think and how you interpret things. That's the other thing. We can't dismiss people because they don't think like us. We are going to have to find common ground because there are just different philosophies. There are different things we want to look at. The bottom line is, can we find common ground? Well, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Um, this is supposed to be some unwind time for me, and I need to really get my head clear uh, to make sure I'm able to do the things I need to do. But I just had to touch on that. I want to come back and I want to say, yeah, I purposely spoke on black men and not hitting black women before I knew who she was. Because to me, it doesn't matter. You know? I don't, and, 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 and I think it actually solidifies my statement because I don't like her. I don't like what I saw. I don't like anything I saw. And I still say, keep your hands to yourself. Don't put your hands on a black woman. I don't give a damn where she's from. She's black. And that's at the end of the day what everybody else is going to see, except those who are actually educated on FBS, D1, and all the other things that we're calling ourselves as foundational blacks or descendants of slaves. The average person isn't on that. They're interpreting black. And so you have to think on the level of the of majority because those are the ones impacted. You don't get to just arbitrarily operate as if everybody thinks like you. And you don't. And the thing is, when you do that, you stop being able to be a leader because you're not relating. Oh, no, no look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, look, if you believe in the work we're doing, the work we've been doing now uh, for multiple decades, look, look in the description box and give. If nothing else, we definitely need to be doing a better job with our children. We need to be doing a better job with programs and mental health. We need to be doing a better job with research. We do all of that. And I'm telling you, we could use your help. On that note, look, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for letting me have your time. Peace.